business card is written uh, Chief Scientific Officer and my name of course and the name of my startup company which is Rigo Synthetic Biolabs. It's the central point of my job is uh, to develop a new product at the moment, uh, to supervise that the team I'm working with or directing is fulfilling those goals. Um, it's a lot of troubleshooting uh, on, on the development of this technology and it's also to make sure that all this uh, scientific side or R&D stays very well connected with the business side of the, well, of the company. Mm. Uh, the limitations are centrally focused on that you lose freedom of, of your, of your uh, research, let's say that way, because you have a different type of deadlines that you have in, in, in academia. academia. So in academia, we're a bit more free of wonder uh, through questions and we can always write a grant with an interesting question. We don't really have to justify it. In When you're in R&D, it's not like that. Actually, you don't care why things uh, work. You just have to make them work. And sometimes when you come from an ac academic field, this leaves you a bit with the feeling, yeah, I still don't know what's going on, you know, but there's a pre time pressure for getting things done. It may still be quite basic in many ways in terms of research or quite fundamental, quite high tech, but you lose a bit the, 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 gris, the, the, the grip on understanding what's going on, for mm -hmm. example. Oh yeah, the upsides, the upsides are that you're working for something that is entirely yours, it's your baby, it's your creation, you're doing something, you're investing time, effort, money, something that stays with you, uh, especially, well, especially but particularly when you fundraise, mm -hmm. is something you allocate to something that is entirely yours, I mean share with your, with your, with your, um, partners, but, uh, but it's yours, it's not that you put, you know, the grant to the university is finished and you have nothing, no, you put this, you develop, stays with you. To decide <laughs> when is this future, but eventually what the situation I would like to have, it's uh, when I have uh, the freedom to actually begin, create, to, begin to create new products uh, based on, on scientific uh, um, factors, let's say. Uh, how to solve problems which are related to science, to, to mm -hmm. genetics, uh, to be able to do this exploration but oriented to creating some products to solve people's problems, or some, spe some people's problems. And also I would like to have a, some a slice of time where I can uh, explore even more um, abstract or theoretical things as to even come with more out-of-the-box ideas. I started as a biologist, as a cell biologist and a statistical physics at the same time. Then I went, went into applied maths only to get more formal tools to work on my stuff related mm -hmm. to genetics evolution. Then I did my PhD on eco in, uh, evolutionary ecology, or well, actually I did my PhD in evolution uh, in a group of evolutionary ecology, okay. which is what led me to Nick Barton eventually mm -hmm. and ended up here. And I also have some, some degree in, in art and science, which sounds very disconnected to all this, but it's not. There are many sides to that question, so I'll try to narrow down one or two. Uh, first of all, I think the connectivity, how I connected to people here, which now are in different places. Um, either because they were postdocs or they are ex-professors from here and some other places and this allowed a lot of uh, you know connections directly or indirectly um, so that was something very important and something that was also crucial is that having having worked with someone like Nick Barton this was a amazing endorsement right uh, we did great job Nick and I I mean I think that what we did was awesome I was not on the side of being extra productive but I was more on the side of taking very challenging problems and solving them. So I was not like salami slicing papers. And that created a very idiosyncratic way to see science for me, mm -hmm. because I always gave more importance to this aspect than to publish many papers, something that many universities don't like. So it determined my career in, in these two ways, in the way I see it, but also it determined which, kind, which options do I have, obviously. Uh, 
but not by restricting them, but by me realizing what is what I want to do, you see? Mm -hmm. So that's why I felt always more comfortable working in institutes of advanced studies, mm -hmm. small places where you can think of new things, rather than the big shot universities where you have to go mad with a, you know, um, latest nature cover and do the same and race with them. <sighs> no, that's not my okay. style, right? So. I see Australia allowed me to structure my mind in terms of what is an important problem, what is a relevant problem to solve, what kinds of problems I want to solve, but also what kind of academic or otherwise life I want to have. Okay, that was uh, one of the main things I got from my experience here. Three pieces of advice to current ISD members. Uh, yes, one uh, for the postdocs, for the postdocs of ISD. Things have probably changed a lot since I left ISD, but I think that there are two levels of things you have to learn as a postdoc. First of all, you have to do your project as a means of, well, learning and maturing, etc. But you also have to keep a, keep a close eye on what you want and what are the next career steps. But you can get very distracted with your project and forget that there's a future that you have to fulfill. And I saw many postdocs uh, have, uh, forgetting these things. That's the first thing. Um, second, I, I feel that there's a lot of uh, gap between, between what is a postdoc and what is a professor. And I see it doesn't give this feeling of a continuity between one and the other. I think, at least in my time, it was great to be a first, to be here as a first postdoc, but not as a, your second postdoc because you would, you won't have that much independence. You wouldn't have that much uh, support for beyond your project. Mm -hmm. uh, that probably changes as well. I don't know, but that would be one thing. I think when we. It was one of these uh, barbecues and we went into the pond, <laughs> like swimming into the pond. And <laughs> I don't know if Tom Hensinger was too happy about the next day, but, uh, but yeah. So this was when ISD was uh, relatively small. This was uh, great memories of these places when we could have like staff meetings of the whole institute every week and this didn't get to 20 people, right? So none of the buildings that exist here existed by, back then and this was very fun, mm -hmm. yeah.